Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle. I am a licensed hairstylist with over 20 years of experience. On this channel, I use those years of experience to help you have healthy, happy hair. So today's video, I'm gonna be talking about curl typing. Curl typing is a pretty hot topic. You see it everywhere. People talk about it all the time. Products are marketed towards certain curl types. I've even seen shampooing, um, like frequency of shampooing being recommended based on curl types. There's all kinds of stuff that really hinges on curl typing. And then there's also some controversies surrounding curl typing. So I'm going to go into my thoughts on curl typing. I'm going to first talk about the different curl types, and then I'm going to go into my thoughts on curl typing and give you my professional opinion as a licensed hairstylist um, about the curl types. So curl types go from one to four as far as numbers, one being straight, four being coily or the tightest of curly hair. And then within those four numbers, they break those down by A, B, and C within each section and describe what those things look like. So you have one, which is straight, you have two, which is wavy, you have three, which is curls that definitely uh, spiral around, whereas wavies just do the make a wave shape. And then the fours, which are the tight coils. And then they break it down by sizes of waves, curls, and coils within that, and that would be an A, B, or C. And the weird thing for me is that they do an A, B, and C in the one category, which is straight. I don't understand that one just because straight hair is straight. Uh, there shouldn't be an A, B, or C because if the hair is anything other than perfectly straight, it is no longer straight. It is curved, just like a pencil. If a pencil is straight, it's straight. If a pencil curves, it's not straight anymore, it curves. So if there's any kind of bend to the hair, it's no longer straight. Straight is straight. By definition, straight is not a curve. So, or a bend or anything um, other than completely straight. So I'm confused about the one category having three sections because that doesn't make any sense to me. I know that there are charts out there, multiple charts out there showing pictures of the different curl types and the subtypes throughout. And then I've also run across definitions of the varying size of curl types and everything like that. So you start off with waves and then the subtypes are the different sizes of waves. So you have like the bigger, looser waves, then the slightly tighter, wavy, more wavy waves to wavy-ish. Um, and again, I'm confused here because I know that there are more than just three within the wavy category. It's, I, I don't understand that part of it. Um, same thing with curls. Curls are defined as being spirals. I would agree with that. Um, and there's the three categories and I've heard it said that the A category is um, the diameter of the size of sidewalk chalk and the B category is the diameter of the size of a Sharpie and then the C category is the diameter the size of a pencil and I guess if you're going to classify and categorize those make sense to me and they are very clear and distinct and those definitions they're you know there's something that you can compare it to and it's solid you can even measure those things and you can say yes this is the size that that is so that makes sense to me um, however, I have seen charts that don't match up with that, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and then within the four category, it does the same thing. You have the four A, B, C, and it defines those differently as well, depending on how tight those uh, coils are. And then I think four C is more of a zigzag type pattern, um, if I remember correctly. Uh, again, I have seen, I have this hair that's like trying to poke out my eyeball. Anyway, um, I have seen multiple different charts on that one or descriptions as well. So I might as well talk about that as long as um, that's what I'm kind of harping on at the moment is the charts and the consistency. So that is probably one of my big issues with the curl typing. I don't understand the point of having a classification if there's no consistency and that's what I see a lot. Like I said, there's a lot of charts and you can look at three different charts and three see three different 
just three different pictures in each of these categories where the curls don't match up. So like a 3B curl in one um, picture or one curl chart is on the looser side and actually is about the size of a Sharpie. And then another one will show a picture of somebody who's got a tighter curl in the 3B category that looks more like it's the size of the diameter of a pencil and it doesn't look any different than the 3C. So, and then you can have a third one that looks completely different altogether. It's somewhere in between, you know, the Sharpie size and the, the, the pencil size or whatever. It's, but there's not enough of a distinct difference to be able to make that out and make that a distinct subtype. subtype. So, which is why I question having those subtypes in there because they're inconsistent and then like, okay, what about all of the curls that fall in between the diameter of a sidewalk chalk and a Sharpie and the ones that fall in between? So there's the consistency that I have a problem with because I have yet to see something that has stayed consistent from one chart to the other and always be exactly the same. So then there, I feel like this brings up a lot of arguments, most especially for the 3B category. That's the one that I see that changes the most from one chart to the next. And then when I also see that as being the one that people will labor the, label their hair as 3B and they get told, no, your hair is not a 3B. Well, how are they supposed to know that when every single chart that's out there is like completely different. So that is my first concern with the curl type or my first issue with curl typing is that I don't see a clear consistency throughout. I mean, maybe a good solid measurement would be great or something, um, but this is hair. It's like everything is unique. So that brings me to my next reason for um, my concern with curl typing. And that is what I mentioned earlier, or what I alluded to earlier, where there's more than just the three different subtypes, because I have seen waves of all different sizes. I've seen curls of all different sizes within the curly range, like from super loose, big, huge spirals to the tighter spirals, and then moving on into the coilies. And literally everything in between. It just, I've not seen just those three categories and hair falling neatly into those three categories. And same thing with waves. Like I've seen waves be all over the place too. And then you have um, what I have heard referred to as the Botticelli curls where the hair is essentially almost wavy up at the top and then starts looping around. And as you get further and further down the hair strand, those the spirals get tighter and tighter. My dad actually happens to have that curl type. So when his hair is short, it doesn't even look curly at all. When it gets really long, it waves and then starts to spiral around, spiral around until it finally gets to the point where the diameter of the curl is the size of a pencil. So a 3C curl that starts off with basically straight hair at the root. And all he has to do to get it to do that is wash it, run a comb through it, and then he lets it air dry and it curls up like that all on its own. So there's no category in there for that type of curl because it literally goes from wave to big loose curl to tighter curl to tighter curl to a 3C-ish curl. So that's another one of my issues is that curls are so unique and there's so many different types and there's so many different ways that you can have curls. And it, I, I so I just, so I just don't understand putting it into the three different subtypes. Um, I think that's too narrow and too hard to do. And then there's the fact that there are those of us who have multiple curl types on our head, including for me, I have literally straight hair at the nape of my neck. If you've watched my how to diffuse curly hair video, you will definitely see it or any video where I've flipped my head upside down to either put on my bonnet or put on my scarf at night, you will see that I have straight hair, completely straight at the nape of my neck. So when I flip upside down, you can see it laying over the top of the rest of my curly hair. Um, and then I have 
looser curls on the ends because my hair used to be looser curled. It actually used to just be wavy. My hair is getting curlier the older I get. And so the stuff that I have on the ends is what my hair was. And then I have tighter curls, especially up in the in the back here. And it curls literally right to the scalp and those are getting much tighter. And then the ends are much looser because that's what it used to be. I have the part of my hair that it's becoming and then I have what's left over of what was. And then I have looser, straighter pieces. I mean, this curls, but just barely. It causes a very large spiral or loop. Um, and then some waves like just here in the front. And um, I have looser curls along here than what I do in that very back section that I mentioned. So I have multiple curl types all over my head. I have multiple curl types down one strand because of the transition that my hair is going through. So I tend not to like to curl type my hair because I do have so many strand or so many different curl patterns within my one head of hair. And I know that my I know from doing hair for as many years as I have that that is not unique to just me. That a lot of people have that. Um, you know, when you figure that I've had a career, a career doing hair for 20 years and 90 to 95% of my clientele had some type of wave or curl to their hair and I've worked on it, you know, anything from looser waves to very tightly coiled hair. Um, and I've seen a wide variety of curls and, um, multiple curl patterns within one head and just, you know, curl patterns that defy everything about this curl typing system. So that's another reason that I don't like it is because I find that everybody's specific head of curls to be beautiful in and of themselves. And I don't, and they're, they're so unique to each individual that I don't understand why we're categorizing and putting everything into boxes. Um, it just, I don't understand that, um, especially because I just don't think that it's possible with something like hair. I just think that there are too many varieties of curls, waves, and coils that it just doesn't make any sense to me to boil it down to three subtypes and try to make that fit. Um, and then, like I said, with the multiple curl patterns on one head, and then if you're confusing the issue further by trying to uh, market products for a specific curl type or making re recommendations for a specific curl type and the person that is looking for these recommendations happens to have straight hair and curls and tight curls and looser ends and they're, they have no idea what to use on their hair because they have so many different things going on and really that's not the most important Important thing in determining what products to use. So that brings me to my next point about why I am not a fan of curl typing and that is because um, your curl pattern isn't the most important thing for picking out products for your hair. When it comes to shampooing, your scalp and your scalp health and any scalp conditions that you have comes first. And in fact, I actually just filmed a video about shampoo basics and touched on that a little bit. Um, so it's the cleansers that you use on your hair don't have anything, don't have that much to do with your curl type. It has more to do with your scalp and then your conditioner has to do with the conditioner of your hair. If your hair is dry, you need a more moisturizing conditioner or you need a deep conditioner that's very moisturizing. If your hair needs protein, then you either need to use a protein treatment or you need to use a conditioner with protein in it. So that's what dictates your conditioner choice, not necessarily your curl type. Yes, it's true that each of these different curl types or like the larger categories of two, three, and four, fall into certain generalizations, like the curlier your hair is, the drier it tends to be, the more fragile it tends to be, and that is absolutely true. However, there's more that's involved in that. Like you can have somebody who has wavy hair that is also very fragile because it's fine and it's been bleached and it's so it's damaged. So that hair is very fragile in comparison to very curly hair that is very healthy and hasn't been bleached or damaged, it's healthy. And even though it's curlier and drier and more fragile by default, it's still going to be in better shape than the wavy hair that has been bleached and damaged 
and is now even more in a more fragile state than that tighter curl. So the condition of the hair matters more for choosing what type of conditioner that you need or what type of treatments that your hair needs than your actual curl type. Um, and then when it comes to styling products, I actually did an entire video on choosing the right style of pro styling products for your hair. And um, I went over those things that I already previously mentioned, but as far as like styling products go, goes like the other thing that factors into it and probably one of the biggest things is what look you're trying to achieve. Do you want volume? Do you want curl definition? Do you want shine? What, you know, um, do you want to help reduce frizz? What, what is it that you're going for with your style? And then the, and then also to consider, and probably one of the most important things to consider when, um, can choosing your styling products and your prep products too, is how fine or coarse your hair is. If your hair is fine, it's gonna get weighed down very easily. So you need to be careful what products that you're putting on your hair. So for example, uh, you could have wavy hair, but have really, really coarse, thick, wavy hair, which my daughter happens to have. And the stuff that's typically recommended for wavy hair, it tends to be a lot lighter weight um, because Everybody thinks that what you need is something that isn't gonna weigh down the waves and the loose curls, which is true. You don't wanna weigh down your waves and loose, cur loose curls. However, if you have coarse, thick hair, it's not going to get weighed down nearly as easily as if you have fine, thin hair that is also wavy. So those waves aren't going to automatically just fall out if you put something heavier on it when you have coarser hair, especially if you have coarse hair that really likes to suck up all that moisture and they re and it really likes that emollient products. And honestly, even with straight hair, I've had clients in my past that had super thick, coarse, stick straight hair and their hair absolutely loved heavier, more moisturizing products because it could handle it because it was super thick, it was super coarse and it didn't weigh it down. I mean, it's hard to weigh down hair that is voluminous by default because of the sheer amount of the hair and the sheer thickness of the strands of hair. It's really hard to get that stuff to weigh down. So fine versus coarse is definitely more important than curl type. So as I just illustrated, and then of course the other thing that matters with styling products and choosing those for your hair are the same things that matter with choosing shampoo and conditioner is the condition of your hair and whether or not it's healthy or if it is dry and damaged and if you need to choose styling products that uh, contain protein or contain moisture to help with those types of things and those don't always correlate 100 percent with what your curl type is for most of my career working behind the behind the chair as a hairdresser there weren't any of these curl types i but i was able to successfully cut style and recommend products for my clients, even without products that were formulated for curly hair. In fact, I actually just did a video and my hair was done today using Biolage products that are not marketed towards curly hair because um, those existed long before the big boon in cur curly specific products. And you absolutely can use those. So you don't need to use stuff marketed even for curly hair, much less specific curl types, because what matters more are all those things that I mentioned before, not just your curl type. Your curl type is a part of it, but it's not the biggest part of it. All of that being said, brings me to the why for the curl typing. Why then do we have this curl typing when it's not necessarily the most useful thing for choosing products for your hair. I have seen many people ask questions or make comments um, all over social media about, you know, I have this type of hair and I chose this type of product because this person who has the same curl type as me uses it and has great success, but I didn't have great success and they're confused and they're trying to figure out why. And I see a lot of that. That's why I, I'm not very fond of like things residing so much only on curl typing as a way to choose products for your hair care regimen. I just don't, I find it to be more confusing for people than helpful. And then I also see people get bullied for 
mistyping their hair, like I mentioned earlier, because of the inconsistencies um, of what constitutes a 3A versus a 3B versus a 3C, and you have all these multiple charts, and how is anybody to know if they look at one chart and they see this and they look at another chart and they see something different and then they call their hair by whatever or you know or if they use this one chart that they found but the person who's seeing them claim their hair to be a 3b is going by a different chart and then they say no your hair is not a 3b and they're not always very nice about it when they say stuff like that or when they say your hair is not a 3a it's a whatever or your hair isn't a 2C, it's a 2B or a 2A or it's, you know, I just, I find curl type to be, again, like I said, more confusing than helpful, but also more harmful than helpful because I just see so many people struggle, first of all, to find their curl type, then to use their curl type to find products and styling techniques that work for that specific curl type while ignoring the other factors of their hair that actually matter more. And then I see people being treated um, pretty badly if they accidentally mistype their curl. Or, I mean, is it accidentally? I mean, since it's so inconsistent, it's like, how can they type it correctly when you're looking at multiple different charts or descriptions or whatever. So for me, um, in my professional opinion, as a hairstylist, as a person with curly hair, I don't find curl typing to be incredibly useful, um, as I have mentioned. And I know that I have some of my videos have curl typing, my curl typing in the title. I have like something like 2C, 3A, 3B hair. Honestly, I could go run the gamut from like one to two to, to different types of two to three, whatever. I put the curl typing in there because I know a lot of people go by curl typing and when they do a search, they go by curl typing and I want them to be able to find the videos that are helpful to them. However, I'm not so sure I'm gonna continue to do that in the future because I just don't, for all the reasons that I mentioned before and because I do have multiple curl patterns throughout my head and because in my experience doing hair for so long and working with so many different heads of hair and different types of curls and different types of curl patterns and different hair types in general, I just know that that specific breakdown of curl typing and the reasons that it gets used for um, aren't that helpful and like I said, I successfully did people's hair for 20 years without using curl typing to do their hair. What I needed to know as a hairstylist when I was working with somebody's hair was all of the things that I mentioned before, the condition of their hair, whether it was dry, what their elasticity is, the porosity, whether it was fine, whether it was coarse, whether it was dense, whether it was thin um, or less dense. Um, and then, yes, I paid attention to curl pattern that always was pretty obvious to me. Generally, as soon as you wash somebody's hair and see it wet, you can start to see their natural texture come come out and you can see, you know, whether it's wavy, slightly wavy, um, if it's, you know, and I know how to cut and vary the tension that I use when I'm cutting based on what I am seeing in front of me visually. And I also vary it as I see the curls vary around the hair and how they fall. Um, and I didn't need to know, oh, this was a 3B curl here and this one's a 3C curl here. Like, I watch how the hair behaves, I watch how everything bounces up and springs up and everything like that. And I didn't need a curl typing system to tell me what I could actually so see. So hopefully you found this video about curl types helpful and that, um, so if you happen to be one of those people who is struggling to figure out what your curl type is, or you struggle to know what to think or how to deal with your hair because you have multiple curl types, or if you did figure out your curl type, but you can't figure out why products that are supposed to work on your curl type don't work on your curl type, hopefully if you fit into any of those categories or any other category and just found this to be a useful, helpful 
video, um, then I have definitely achieved my goal because that's what this was for, is for those of you who have been struggling with the curl type issue and struggling with um, using that as a way to find products or styling techniques that work for your hair. Um, it's probably not you that's doing anything wrong. It's that going by your curl type is not the best way to go about doing any of those things, just like I mentioned with all of that. Um, and maybe this might also be helpful for those of you who have been feeling kind of some of the, the sting or the backlash of um, being told that you're typing your, your curls wrong and you know because you've looked at one chart and everybody else is looking at a different chart or whatever and i just wanted to point out too that the point of this video is not to bash the system or anybody who uses the system it's just my professional opinion and my opinion as a person with curls i i don't feel this is the best that we can do for classifying our hair i think i think it's really hard to classify unique individual heads of hair and put them into boxes and expect that all hair that has this so-called curl type is going to behave exactly the same way to exactly the same products because it won't. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this, please hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to ask a question, request something that you'd like to see, um, comment about the things that I've said, um, share your perspective with me. I'd be happy to hear it. You know, just go ahead and leave a comment down below, even if you just want to say hi or whatever. And as always, thank you for watching. Bye.